Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and welcome to another episode of what I'm playing. Today, I've got a real treat for you guys. This is Blazing Chrome, which is available on all the major systems you can get on Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, PC, whatever you'd like to play it on, as long as it's not a dang smartphone, right? But I'm playing this on Xbox because it is free on Game Pass. So if you're a Game Pass subscriber for Xbox or PC, this is definitely a great way to try this game out. But I'm thinking I might end up, at least in the near future, uh, buying this game on, say, the Switch or something like that because I'm enjoying this game a lot. And it is a lot of fun. So what exactly is Blazing Chrome? Well, I'm going to go ahead and undo this progress here because I want to show you guys from the beginning of the game. Essentially, this game is if you had the love child of Contra and Metal Slug team up together. This game is a frantic and fast-paced run-and-gun platforming type game, just like you would expect with those games, of course. Uh, well, obviously, Metal Slug's a little bit on the slower side, this is definitely more on the Contra level of pace, I'd say even a bit faster. This one's probably a little more close to pace of something like Gunstar Heroes. And as a matter of fact, you do have your melee attack, of course, that you can use, like in Gunstar Heroes or Metal Slug, of course. So you have that as an option, and you've got four different characters. There's two that you have unlocked at the beginning, but as you saw, I had more than that because I've already beat the game. So when you beat the game, you can unlock special characters that are basically ninja type characters so they actually play a bit differently but I wanted to kind of show you guys the gameplay of the regular characters at least for a little bit you know maybe I can show some ninja gameplay in just a bit but this game is pretty nutsoid when it comes to all this stuff it's it's insane um, obviously the most notable uh, influence here with this particular game is Contra 3 The Alien Wars, uh, followed probably by Contra Hard Corps, because this definitely does have some Hard Corps vibes as well, but I would say it's most closely tied to Contra 3. At least that's my personal opinion on it, so I don't know, you guys can let me know what you think, if uh, you think it's one or the other, but uh, anyways, I got my first death here, and this game is pretty tough, but it's kind of forgiving at the same time too you don't have to worry about say credits in the same way you do contra at least for the lower difficulty settings. if you're playing the hardest difficulty then you do have to worry about credits uh, but that's another story entirely so one of the really cool things here is you get these little robots that you can collect to uh, basically enhance your character in some ways like right now my character has the um, speed boost so the speed boost, um, I can move faster, obviously, and I can also double jump, which is always nice to have. It's nice extra. And uh, now I lost it because I died, so that's kind of one of the downsides. Same with the weapons. If you die, you will lose it. But you can do a roll dodge to kind of help out a bit, you know, avoiding certain enemy attacks and whatnot. So definitely a really cool way to go about it. And epic explosions nice pixely graphics i mean this game has the works it really does on that front you know so i mean obviously if you grew up playing these kinds of games if uh you know if you hadn't dropped your balls yet or you were uh getting ready to drop your balls when you're playing these kinds of games you'll feel right at home this is that type of game you know as a matter of fact that's kind of like the uh review i gave on xbox for that you know like you know, this is for the people that had their voice changing. Yeah, so I just uh, got this here. You got to eject the vehicle. So you got the elements like in Metal Slug where you get the vehicles that you can kind of pilot and wreck stuff for a while. It's always nice to have that as an option, of course. Um, let's go ahead and check out the grenade weapon. So the grenade weapon's pretty good. So each weapon, you know, you have the machine gun indefinitely, of course, but the grenade weapon is really nice because it does a lot of damage. Like, it probably would have took me a lot longer to defeat that particular boss if I didn't have it. Now, 
The downside with using those extra weapons, obviously, is when you die, you lose them. The machine gun, you don't lose, however. So if you know you're in a situation where you're probably going to die a lot, it's probably best to switch weapons at least as quickly as you can before that happens. Like right here, I'll be fine, for example. I should have no trouble avoiding this particular attack. But, uh, you know, if I had an attack that's a little more, you know, like that right there, for example, that's kind of hard to avoid. You have to really make sure you have your distance kept close on that. But yeah, this is a pretty cool boss, uh, very reminiscent of the uh, cyborg from Contra 3, level 3, obviously. Very famous boss fight from the uh, Super Nintendo era. And, you know, Contra 3 is pretty much like one of the best uh, Super Nintendo games ever made. You know, that, I fully stand by that statement. It's a game that I still regularly play from time to time. It's not a game that... Uh, I'll probably ever stop playing, you know, I'll probably be like in my 60s and I'll still play that game <laughs> if I'm still alive anyways. But uh, yeah, it's ridiculous just how much I love games like Contra 3. This game is definitely right up there, it really is. But you know, I do have a couple of complaints that I do want to address uh, that keep it from being as good, at least for me, which of course some of that could be nostalgia too. You know, because I'm very nostalgic for that particular game. But one of the downsides is there's only a few levels altogether. Um, there is, like, basically five and a half levels. And that's it. There's not a whole lot of levels. And as you can see, they're kind of on the shorter end. You know, I was able to kind of breeze through that pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch out of this. I'm going to show you a little bit of the ninja gameplay. And we'll show you a different mission as well. I think it has to... It makes me float in. But uh, we can go ahead and uh, go to the main menu. Switch characters. Oh, wait, I didn't want to do that. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and... S well, I'll show you this segment real quick. Because this is obviously very reminiscent of Mission 4 and Contra 3. Where you're on the bike and stuff like that. You know, really cool little mission. Obviously, it's a lot different in terms of gameplay. Because you have to kind of constantly move. And you have to kind of aim back and forth, you know. But otherwise, same basic stuff, of course. You know, you have to keep in mind things like explosions on the ground that uh, can wreck your stuff. You have to be mindful. You know, your bike is not as maneuverable as you are necessarily. You know, you do have a little bit of limitations on that. So you have to keep that in mind. But a lot of fun. So we're going to go ahead and check out some of that ninja gameplay. Just so I can show you guys. Let's do it in mirrored mode just so you can see that can change the direction of things because why not um i played as a chick for the shooting thing so we'll play as the uh ninja guy who uh clearly is kind of inspired by something like ninja gaiden nothing wrong with that of course uh, let's check out the weapons facility stage with the ninja you can see some of that difference with the way it works obviously the ninja um moves quicker but you don't have a gun. You're using a sword, of course. But you can charge it up and wreck some enemies hardcore, which is really cool. Uh, the ninja is a great way to play the game, but it's not really the, def the way I think that people would originally think about uh, these kinds of games. But it's a really cool little extra mode. You know, I really appreciate that they added this, of course. It gives it a different play style, and, you know, it's really cool also if you want to play with uh, friends or whatever, and everybody's like, well, I want to play as a ninja, you know, well, one of you can, you know, one of you can play as a ninja, one of you can play as the uh, the gun character, and, or both of you can play as ninjas or gun characters or whatever, you know, it's, it's up to you, you know, that's what's really cool about it. But obviously, the ninja, they are quite a bit more agile, um, and they have... Um, you know, a lot, lot, lot higher jump as well. So that's kind of an advantage of them. Of course, obviously a disadvantage, you don't have long range weapons except for that charge shot, but you have to wait for that charge shot to activate. So, you know, in kind of hairy situations like that, it can be tough, you know, to uh, deal with the ninja. And I'm just getting myself slaughtered because I'm just really sucking at this game at the moment. So my apologies on that. Um, but yeah, 
it, it's just a good time. It really is. And I got myself killed again. I played really terribly there. I don't know if it's because I was playing in mirrored mode, and that probably could have been a reason why, I think. I don't want to give myself too much of an excuse, but Blazing Chrome is a hell of a time. Highly recommend this game, guys. Uh, you got boss rush mode, of course. Um, the other downside to this game here is you don't have online co-op, which I can't fault the game too much on that for one reason. That's because of the fact that usually these games don't have any kind of online co-op. So that's kind of like the story of the life of a Contra clone type game. You know, it's just what you get in the territory of these kinds of games. I'm using the powerful Laser Blast, which is actually really good in this particular game. Um, it's not crappy like the Laser Blast in Contra, so definitely take advantage of that if you get a chance. I'll probably be able to wreck this boss pretty handily, and I'm going to see if we can maybe possibly squeeze another boss or two in since we've already seen this boss. So, if you want to lock your shot in place, you have to use, like, the uh, left to right bumper or the L, you know, L1, R1 type buttons, obviously. So, you can just do that kind of shot as well, you know. But I wanted to do the max damage. And I lost my laser power up. Awesome! Awesome, guys. I really, I really did it good there. But, you know, wreck it here. Wreck it some Ralph. There we go. And he's still alive, of course. And he's gonna try to bash me with his claw. There we go. Stop that attack from happening. We're gonna see if we can get one more boss squeeze in here, but uh, this game is a retro love letter to these kinds of games, you know, if you like these kinds of games, you know who you are, you know this game's for you already, you probably were able to tell that within the first 30 seconds of this video, you probably already got off the video, if you were that kind of impatient person that just has to play this game immediately, which I don't blame you, uh, that's a really hard shot to telegraph there, just because of, oh shoot, that's right, Forgot the whip thing can actually uh, sort of grab things, but I don't have access to it anymore now, so I'm kind of screwed there. But I do have the grenade power up, which is pretty good in damage. Still, it's not as good as the laser, obviously, but it still is pretty good. Good enough to blow up that little tank thing. No problems there. I'm going to go ahead and wreck this. I guess stage two only had one boss fight. I could have swore I had more than that. Guess it did it. Yep. Going to wreck him up. Okay. Plus, I can still get my shots in whenever I got to change positions like that. Very easy boss, but yeah, I mean, Blazing Chrome is amazing, guys. Um, I think, I think the gameplay is self-evident of that. So, highly recommend you check it out. Obviously, if you have Game Pass on PC or Xbox, that is the cheapest way you can experience this game. Since you know, if you got that service, you can already play the game. You just got to go ahead and download it to your system of choice and start playing. You know. But obviously, you can support the developers by purchasing this game on the storefronts as well. It goes for 17 bucks, so a little bit on the pricier side for this kind of game. But I mean, it is definitely high quality, high tier. They put a lot of really good work in this game. So I'd say it's probably worth the money, you know, most likely. You know, unless you're just really, you know, kind of mail on the lack of online co-op you know which i can see that you know like that is kind of a disappointing thing maybe that hopefully the developer can do something with that um in the future you know 
patch or something like that. That would be sweet. I'm not going to hold my breath on it, though. The game's fine as it is. So, I'm just kind of repeating the same crap at this point. But I think this is a good time to end the video. So hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay of Blazing Chrome. And with that, Down Phoenix out.